Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, this week's lab is going to be focused on views and view groups. So we're continuing along, plowing through our book at breaknecking pace, uh, getting closer to our final destination of total control over the Android UI. Uh, we'll get there, and then once we're after that, we'll talk about design principles and some of the cooler back-end stuff of working with the cloud. And once we get there, I'll be doing a lot more hands-on stuff with you. But for now, I think the book's doing a pretty good job. Um, I do want to introduce this topic, and I want to talk about just a few kind of key concepts you're going to run into, uh, as well as something that may have been tripping you up so far on your uh, labs and on your assignment. Okay, so recall, uh, this is all about views and view groups in this chapter. Uh, if you recall, views are the basic building block for user interface components. And in Android, a view occupies a rectangular area on the screen. And the view is also a class. And it is responsible for drawing and handling events within its little rectangular box. Okay. So views um, thus far have been specified in these XML layout files that accompany your activity. Um, and what happens is, under the hood, Android reads these XML files that you create for your layouts, for your activities, and converts them all into Java objects uh, that subclass this Java view class. And again, as a reminder, why do we do that, or why did Android elect to do that? Um, basically because writing GUI code in Java is very painful. And, excuse me, putting it inside an XML file and kind of automatically translating it is there for you to be more productive, <laughs> right? So, um, the view group is a subclass of the view, and its job is to arrange things and organize on the screen. Okay, so a view group can contain other views, which are its children, and it is the base class for layouts and other containers, right? Uh, and so far you've been interacting predominantly with the linear layout, at least if you're following your book. If you've been working with Android Studio, though, you may have worked with or certainly seen this concept of a constraint layout. And we'll get uh, next week is going to be focused on the constraint layout and really getting you uh, up to speed on that. Um, so thus far, you've seen very primitive things, right? Um, this week, you're going to get introduced to a whole bunch more stuff. Everything up here that's bold faced and starred, this is new for you. So you by the end of this chapter, you're going to be looking, making things that are a lot more flexible. And once you combine these new uh, view types with, say, some pretty spiffy styling, you know, uh, just with colors and rounded edges and kind of other things, you know, you can tweak your fonts and things like that. Um, once you get into that, you'll have the ability to really make your UI start looking better. Um, in this chapter, you get toggle buttons, switches, checkboxes, radio buttons, images. You're going to learn how to put images inside your app, um, make it a button. And you will learn about two layouts. One is the frame layout for stacking things one on top of the other. And the other is the scroll view. So whenever you've got too much stuff on one screen and you just want to have scrolling, uh, you need to wrap that stuff in the scroll view. And also the toast. Right? The toast uh, in Android, if you've had have an Android phone, you've certainly seen a toast. That's the little pop-up stuff that comes on the screen. Okay. Um, chapter 5 is also going to give you some more tools to get your views uh, looking the way you want. Uh, you'll talk about scaling your views relative to one another. You'll learn about the concept of gravity, and not Newton's gravity, but Android's gravity. There's two notions of gravity. One is poorly named, I should add. One is just called gravity, and that's how things are centered inside a widget. Do you want them on the right, the left? Where do you want them? Um, and then there's the notion of layout gravity, which is when you've got widgets inside a layout or a view group, where do those widgets go, right? So if you've got multiple buttons, how do you get the buttons centered and aligned in the center? Um, versus that's layout gravity, so aligning the widgets that are children of a layout. And then there's regular gravity, which is aligning the contents 
of a widget within itself, within that square. So, like, where do you want the text on your button to be? Do you want it to be left justified, right justified, in the center? So that's the difference between gravity and layout gravity. You'll get into that. More about orientation of your contents, margin, padding, and then uh, an interesting concept called start and end, right? For positioning things. Normally when you talk about positioning things in a layout you think in terms of top, bottom, right, left. Uh, you'll learn about start and end in this one. That's a very interesting case because some people uh, in some countries with some languages read right to left and they expect the start of their content to be on the right hand side of the screen instead of the left hand side of the screen. Um, Android kind of takes care of that for you magically as long as you specify your layouts correctly. All right, you'll be adding pictures with an image view and stacking UI elements with a frame layout. So this is not specifically in the lab for this week, but it's something I want to bring up with you so that you, you hopefully have a better idea of what's going on in that on create method in all of your activities. So here's an excerpt from the beer expert. And I've tweaked this a little bit because um, I want to demonstrate a point with it. Okay, So on create, you've read your activity lifecycle chapter and you've done the work and you've read the official Google documentation on it. And you know that on create is called whenever uh, Android is getting ready to sh it's like building up. It's like the constructor for your class and you got to initialize your data and everything. Inside the onCreate method, usually the first call is this super dot onCreate saved instance state. And you learned about that in a previous chapter. Now, there's a couple other things that you are frequently doing inside your activity class. So what I have here on this line is text view brands, okay, gets find view by ID r dot ID dot brands. Now what does this do? Right? The intention is we talked about find view by ID before, and you gotta understand kind of what this method does, at least at a high level. It goes to your layout XML file, which Android has converted into widgets for you, and it says, Alright, get the widget with this ID. When you specify the widget in the layout XML file, you probably created an Android colon ID attribute, and it had like plus at ID slash something, right? I called this one brands. It goes and it finds that widget, the actual Java object, and assigns it here. Okay. But my question to you is, right now, after this line of code executes, what is the value of brands? Well, the answer is, it's null. Okay. The reason why it is null at this point, this is obviously not what you want, right? You want the text view there. Maybe you want to set the text contents or get the contents out, but you clearly don't want this to be null. That's bad. Why is why would it be null though? Go try it. You'll see that it is null. Because whenever your activity is created, okay, whenever your find beer activity is created. It initially has no idea what its layout is or what should be in it, right? It's just an empty Java class and it's kind of waiting for instruction. But at the beginning of every onCreate method, you know, probably like right at, almost right after you do super.onCreate, saved instance state, you have a method that looks like this set content view r.layout.activityfindbeer. So what do you think this does? This is the magic connection between your activity and its layout file, right? So we talked briefly about the view and the view model in several videos ago. The view is the layout file. It specifies all the widgets. The view model is the activity. It controls the behavior of the activity on the screen. But whenever the activity is initially created, it doesn't know what its layout file is. And nowhere is it specified, right? It's not magic that it finds it. It is through this call right here, right? This call is saying, hey, set the content 
for this activity to be this layout file, r.layout.activityfindbeer. Now this is a little bit of magic. Android will map this name right here, activity underscore find underscore beer, to r.layout.activityfindbeer. Okay. This is the connection. Once this connection is made, okay, through the set content view call, now find beer activity can find its widgets. Okay. And vice versa. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if right, and vice versa. Now that like the widgets that are in here know where like on click listeners are and things like that. So now when you get down here, brands gets find view by ID, aha, now this will process. Okay. So you got to know, you don't necessarily have to know deeply how they work, though it's kind of interesting, but you really have to know what these methods do, the set content view and the find view by ID, what their parameters are, what they return. Okay. So what do you work on? Uh, there's a lab for chapter five in your book. You're going to go through that. And assignment two is now posted. So it's a assignment two builds upon assignment one. You're going to take your existing code and just add on to it. All right. Let me know what questions you have and good luck.